So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an introduction to uh, the theory of collusive oligopoly which begins with our concept on uh, cartels. So um, before we discuss the Bertrand, the Stackelberg, and the, uh, the Curnot model, and these models often assume that uh, the firms didn't really talk with one another. They didn't interact, they often acted independently, one firm being a leader, one firm being a follower, and so on. And in these types of models, um, while there are certainly instances of those, there's always an incentive for these firms to potentially collaborate or to collude with other firms in such a way that they can have more control, especially when the product is uniform, as we'll show in this particular video. So uh, one way that firms can avoid uncertainty and competitive pressures arising from, you know, that independence from each other from mutual in, uh, independence is for firms who recognize this independence to enter into formal uh, or informal agreements among firms in this particular industry. And the way that they do this is they form these agreements in such a way that they restrict competition in a goal to increase profits. And there are generally two types of these uh, collusions. So we call this formally as collusions. Uh, the first is a cartel, and uh, the second is a price leadership type of model. And in this video, we're going to zero in on our uh, example of our cartel. And uh, in, in these types of collusions, uh, both firms generally imply secret agreements, right? So oftentimes, these are under the table or secret deals, since uh, open collusive action is commonly illegal. So uh, typically, there are many antitrust regulations that ban the organization of cartels in, in a particular economy uh, because of its ability to control the market quite well. So uh, the particular th topics that we're going to discuss may, might not necessarily always uh, be legal uh, in all countries, but they are forms of how firms could organize themselves in order to capture a lot of the market and gain a higher profit. So let's zero in on cartels. So a cartel essentially is a group of producers, so it's a group of producers, which collusively determine the price and output in the market with the intention of maximizing total profit in the industry. So they're gonna collaborate and they're gonna collude with the sole goal of trying to get all the profits in the industry. And when a cartel works as its members intend, it essentially acts almost like a single monopoly in that it, uh, which maximizes the total industry profit. And what happens with uh, how a cartel works is that the member firms usually appoint a central agency or like a central body composed of maybe representative from all the small firms in which they delegate the authority to decide not only the total quantity, but also the price at which the products are sold. So the, they sort of get, okay, how much will we produce? How much will each firm produce? And what's the price that it's set? Remember, uh, the price is now something that they can dictate, right? Because uh, they, have, they, they act as if they are a sole monopolist. And... Uh, it's this central agency, too, that tries to determine the allocation of production among the member firms of the cartel and the distribution of the maximum joint profit among the participating members. And again, all of these goals are to attain the maximum cartel profits. So what's the maximum profit that they can get as a whole unit and how to divide uh, those earnings, oh, I'm sorry, not those earnings, but the quantity that they produce uh, subject to that specific goal. So for our example, um, moving forward, which we'll, uh, we'll discuss an actual example in the next video, but we'll discuss the theory in this video, we'll assume that there are only two firms operating, ident uh, producing identical products. So similar to perfect competition, it's homogenous good. Uh, and uh, it, it, they operate in a market characterized by your typical downward sloping market demand curve, 
but where the total output in the market is just um, firm 1 and firm 2's output. So that's Q1 and Q2. And each firm has a cost function, which subsequently each firm has a marginal cost function. Right? So that's the setup that we have. Now, the, the central problem of the cartel is to be able to choose the profit maximizing total output, which is Q. So what Q, okay, uh, will we choose to produce? And about, uh, even inside that, what is the allocation of production of the total Q to the member firm? So we, we know that we need to determine Q, but in the determination of Q, how much will firm one produce, that's Q1, and how much will firm two produce? What's the segmentation between them? So it's not necessarily half in the case of a Bertrand model, but in this case, it might be dependent more on the cost structure as well. And apart from this, right, they also need to determine at what price they choose to sell. So that's the cartel price. And in what we notice is that the first order condition to maximize the cartel profit okay, requires that the cartel allocate production between the two member firms in such a way that the marginal costs are equal to the common marginal cost uh, of the cartel, which is also equal to the cartel's marginal revenue. So it goes like this. So uh, the marginal revenue of the cartel, so that's Q, should be equal to the common marginal cost of the cartel, that's MCCQ, which is equal to the marginal cost of the two member firms. So that's MC1Q1 and equal to MC2Q2. And essentially, this is the condition that we will be, you know, a sort of stipulating. In, in other words, right, uh, this condition, this profit maximizing cartel will always allocate an output among its member firms so as to keep their marginal costs equal. Okay, so it, it's this sense of parity between them that they're trying to keep their marginal costs equal. Now, how did we arrive at this particular conclusion? So let, let's sort of break it down a bit, right? So to arrive at this profit maximizing solution, so if you recall the typical oligopoly, the FOC for a maximum profit for a cartel, right? It's acts like an, a monopolist, right? So that's just MR of the cartel being equal to MC of the cartel, right? Because it acts like a pure monopolist. Where, uh, so if you remember how we do MR, right? So that's MRCQ. This is the derivative of your revenue of the cartel with respect to Q, which is just your inverse demand plus Q times uh, DPQ over DQ. And that's the cartel's marginal revenue. Now, what we notice is that MCCQ, this expression, is the common marginal cost, okay? And what we observe is that it should be equal to the horizontal sum of the marginal cost of each individual firm. But the question is, how do you get that horizontal sum? How, how do we determine that? Well, first, you start with the, uh, the notion that the total market output, which is Q, is uh, that's the total output of the cartel. That's just Q1 or the output of firm 1 plus Q2, which is the output of firm 2. Then to get the horizontal sum of the marginal cost of the two member firms, there is a need for us to invert the marginal cost of each member firm. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-express it. So we're going to re-invert it as a function of marginal cost. So we get Q1 which is some function of the marginal cost of firm one, and right, Q2, which is some function of the marginal cost of firm two, right? Then what we can uh, do is we, we, let, uh, we let MC1 be equal to MC2, be equal to the common marginal cost. Then uh, we can infer that if this condition holds, like strictly if this holds, 
that Q1 is going to be some function of MCC, right? And Q2 will likewise be some function of the common marginal cost of the cartel, right? Because we assumed that MC1 is equal to MC2 is equal to MCC, right? Then what we observe is the horizontal sum, okay? So that, uh, that total firm output, Q1 plus Q2, is just equal to Q1 MC, uh, C, which is some function of the common marginal cost, plus Q2, which is also some function of the common marginal cost, right? Then if we let Q1 plus Q2 denote the firm's total, the cartel's total output, then we can now write the horizontal sum of the marginal costs, that's this one here, as just the Q is equal to Q, which is some function of the marginal cost of the cartel, the common marginal cost. And what we can do is, again, we can, uh, we can invert this expression, right? So this is Q as some function of MC. You can invert it as MCC as some function of Q, right? So this is some function of Q. Then the optimal total cartel output, which is Q star, must satisfy the condition that MRC Q star should be equal to MCC Q star then to find the optimal allocation of output between the member firms, we must first calculate the cartel's marginal cost at the optimal Q star. So we need to first calculate MCC star, right? Which is just essentially MCC Q star. Then we substitute this to uh, each of the individual firms. So we can get Q1 star, which is Q1 as some function of the optimal MCC. And we can also get Q2 star, which is some function of the uh, optimal common marginal cost. Then the optimal price is of each member firm uh, is just obtained by uh, just plugging in the, uh, the optimal Q, capital Q, the total output of the cartel that we obtained. Note that they will sell it at the same price because again it acts like a sole monopolist right so it they'll they'll sell it at a similar market price the quantities will be different among the firms based on their cost but uh the market price that will prevail is something that's uh the same across firms so i think to be able to get this more apart from the example that we will do in the next video let's do it graphically so i have here a graph okay so uh, what you'll notice is we have here a, a bunch of curves. We have a demand curve, a marginal revenue curve, and three marginal cost curves. Okay, so uh, we have here three marginal cost curves, the marginal cost of firm one, of firm two, and of the entire cartel. Right? And we know that the optimal condition for us is that MR, uh, the FOC that we're going to use states that... Um, that the MR of the cartel, right, should be equal to the MC of the cartel, right? So that's at this point here, okay? Therefore, um, this one is Q star, and that is the optimal, okay? So this is your profit, that's your profit maximizing total output, right? Then how do you get the corresponding price? Well, uh, you put it against the demand, uh, the demand curve, which is somewhere here. Then you can get this uh, here, which is P star. And this is your profit. Okay, this is your profit maximizing price, right? So you have there. Now... How do you get the output that is produced by firm one and by firm two? Well, you just have to bring it to their cost curve, to their marginal cost curve. So if you look at this a pattern here, so we're just gonna draw the line there, okay? And it intersects the marginal cost curve here, and then here as well, right? And then we have here, okay? So notice, okay, this part here, this entry here, let's call it. P, uh, P1, I'm sorry, P dash, okay, this is the common, okay, this is the common 
marginal cost of the of the cartel right so if supposedly the cartel operated under a perfectly competitive market then that this would be the price that would be set but again it operates as if it were a monopolist so it charges p star not p prime right or p dash now how would we determine the output produced by uh firm two well it's just here so this output here this is actually q2 and this is the output of firm two and this one here is q1 which is the output of a firm one so this uh distance there that's q1 right and uh, if, if you add all okay so if, if you add that okay uh those two uh entries there so if you add this quantity plus uh so this entire thing here is q2's output that one there's q1 if you add both you should get a sum equal to q star because uh q uh q star is equal to q1 plus q2 so uh that's uh the representation of the oligopoly under a cartel mechanism under a cartel collusion uh using a graph and i think it intuitively explains our assumptions earlier so I think to better get it, uh, I'll see you in the next video wherein we tackle an actual mathematical example using calculus. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.